Okay, <clears throat> so today I'm going to do a really fast demonstration here. Um, basically, this is actually a Datto device on the network in our office, and there is a virtual server running in our office called Optimus. So I'm going to actually start pinging Optimus so we can see over here that it's up, it's responding to pings. In this window here, I'm actually looking at a file share. You can see I can kind of browse around and see what's inside of this and you know that it's actually up and running. Uh, now over here, we can see the virtual machine running and what we'll do is we'll pause that, which of course is gonna break this file share and uh, the ping as well. Now, what we want to do is see how long it would take for the data to actually get uh, this back up and running on the network here. So we go in here, we select our server, and we can say local virtualization, which means it will actually start a virtualization now. Um, the last backup was at 11.03, it's 11.49. I'll choose start virtualization. Let's know how many cores, how much RAM, all that good stuff. We're just going to bridge it to the uh, network here. Hit apply. Start up the virtual machine. Now this is actually going to recover uh, the failed virtual machine on the Datto device itself. So if this were a uh, actual dedicated physical server, uh, not in a virtualized environment, um, you wouldn't have to actually have, say, another server sitting around. You could actually just restore to the Datto. Uh, depending on the Datto, you can restore one or more virtual machines. Uh, well, here's what we'll do. We'll connect via RDP. Oh, come on. And it's going to provide this little link here. We're going to open that up. Now, the interesting thing about the RDP link here, too, by the way, we're remote desktoping essentially to the uh, failed server. We can actually see the Windows start screen. What's interesting about this is even though it's an RDP session, we're actually RDPing to hardware. So usually RDP would only function if the Windows server was actually running. Um, here we're actually literally watching the Windows machine uh, boot up. In addition to this, one of the things I really like, and uh, what it's doing right here is not uncommon because basically it went from one virtualized environment to another. So um, what it's having to do is kind of like a uh, just general plug and play to kind of figure out the drivers, uh, that sort of thing. So, But one of the things that we really like about the Datto is every night it actually creates a image and each night uh, it actually boots up that image and it waits a certain amount of time and it actually looks for the uh, login screen for the server, the uh, press control alt delete, uh, so that you can actually uh, you know, know that it would boot up and log in. If it gets a screen, like let's say after three minutes, it's still at a screen like this, the whole getting devices ready screen, um, what it would do is actually, it would fail that check. And for us, it would create a ticket uh, to let us know, hey, you know, um, this thing, did not boot up successfully. So sometimes we have to go in and maybe resolve some issues with some drivers, uh, that sort of thing. Um, this this machine that we're booting up basically is just a domain controller. Uh, it does uh, just a handful of uh, services for us on the network, so it's not really gonna disrupt anything, so. go back down here we can have it send the control delete to to the machine for us and that's how we log in Check something here. Okay, it's ten eight eight four. <laughs> it 
So like I said, it's not uncommon actually after the machine boots up to have to go in and you know uh, give it an IP or something else like that. Uh, sometimes it knows its IP, sometimes it doesn't. What's interesting is right now we're just a few minutes into this demonstration. course, you know, even though the machine's not yet on the network, the machine actually is up. So we can see really all this boils down to at this point is not having an IP address. I believe that was dot four. Yep, dot four. fingers. Okay, and now it has an IP. And now we are pinging. And now we can browse our file share. So the total elapsed time as of right now is 7 minutes and 20 seconds. So uh, not a bad recovery at all. So the interesting thing too about this is the data will also protect this virtual machine. So, you know, that would be the next thing uh, that I would be concerned about is, you know, after failing over to a uh, <coughs> uh, machine is that, you know, what happens after you're done with it? You know, you would need to, of course, uh, you know, take the uh, 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 changes from within inside of the virtual machine and stage it back to another machine and that whole process is actually pretty easy. And when we're done, we just stop and unmount, which is basically going to destroy the changes. Uh, you usually wouldn't want to do that, of course, if you had to fail over to a production environment. And for us, our customers, uh, none of them usually would ever have to do any of this themselves. Um, or I can say none of them would have to do it our, uh, themselves. All of our customers, uh, this is a service that we would do. It's part of the uh, uh, fee that they would pay us for the data. Uh, any uh, restores, any recoveries, any of that type stuff, uh, we would actually uh, help them with. So. Some other interesting options here too, by the way, is with Optim with this uh, Optimus server. Um, the other options here, okay, you could actually just do a file restore and do individual files. You could virtualize here locally, which is what we just did. You could virtualize in the cloud. Um, you can actually virtualize uh, via a hypervisor. Um, so you could actually tell it to, uh, you know, go right back into a different uh, Hyper-V system. You could uh, upload it to a VMware ESX host, uh, Bare Metal Restore. What Bare Metal Restore does is actually kind of interesting. <clears throat> it will host the uh, file needed to do a bare metal image restore, and then you actually create a ISO or USB flash drive uh, to the new box, and that is actually a really good way of uh, migrating physical machines as well. Uh, you can do a diskless restore, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you actually create a USB drive and it actually sets up uh, the Datto as a iSCSI server on the network and the entire machine boots across the network to a physical 
hardware device. Um, so, and then another thing here too that's interesting is you can actually just do a uh, export of an image. So we could take that same snapshot point and we could say start image export. And it's going to say where do you want to put this and what type of a file do you want this to be? Okay, uh, VHDX is the new uh, Hyper-V file. So we can choose export. And basically what this is going to do is on uh, the data itself, it is actually preparing the image uh, as that particular file type. And then what it is going to do is publish that uh, image file uh, to the data on the data itself. And then you would just browse to that particular path and you could copy that file off. That also um, sets up some interesting scenarios to be able to uh, uh, do some migrations as well. Uh, we've used this to you know, migrate physical machines to virtual and vice versa, or from even from one virtualized platform to another. All right, <clears throat> so when it's finished, basically, here's what we'll see. And this is actually kind of cool because if you're on a Linux box or Unix box or something like that, there's actually an NFS path to get to the files. But what it's saying here is this is the SIFS uh, path to get to the file, meaning that you could do this and basically uh, just paste the path into uh, uh, you know uh, Windows Explorer here. And this is the local IP of the Datto uh, unit. Uh, this is the share. And here is everything that you would need to import uh, into uh, Hyper-V to actually have this particular uh, uh, virtual machine image. So uh, pretty cool stuff. So the individual granular uh, file restore works the same way. It will publish a point in time snapshot of the uh, file system that you want to restore. Uh, it actually takes a lot less time to uh, uh, publish that and have that go up there too. So uh, the data has just been one of those game-changing type of devices. There's been no good backup solution forever and ever and ever. You know, it's, it's not the cheapest solution in the world, but that's because it's, you know, so far, I believe the best solution, period. So uh, contact us if you guys have any questions. Uh, we love showing this stuff to people, okay? Thanks.